おい拾えあ拾えと言うとるんじゃこっちの聞き方に気をつけろせめえどっ見下ろすなチビがおお10分だ10分間無抵抗で殴られ続けて最後まで立っていられたらお前の勝ちでいいいいからさっさとやれムカつくんだよ Hey everybody, welcome back to the Unverse Podcast. Danny here today. We're diving into Hinomaru Zumo yet again.、Uh, going through my endless backlog of manga I've already read, trying to catch up,、uh, and watching videos on YouTube, I come to find out Hinomaru Zumo ended last year. And、um, I didn't keep up the last time I talked about it. So I、uh, dove in and finished up this series. Now, last time I talked about this、uh, was at 176 chapters. And I、uh, went back into the episode、uh, that I talked about. And, you know, some of the highlights. Yeah, it's very sports anime right early on.、Uh, pacing could use some work.、Uh, character development was solid at first. And most of my gripes actually comes from the second half of the series, right?、Uh, first half is great. You know, it's very sports anime indeed. You know, classic high school tropes, this, this, and that. You know, stuff you will see in Jump for who knows how long they make sports mangas, you know.、Uh, but it's the second half I had these problems with, you know.、Um, I will give it props, though. It did change the game by moving past high school, right? I said that last time.、Uh, I never really see that happen in a sports manga or even just high school mangas in general. So, you know, it's pretty cool to see them. Push、uh, his life forward. And you know, the way it's set up that he had to, you know, Hinomaru himself had to, you know, skip the rest of high school and jump into his career as a sumo wrestler. And the explanations for all that I thought were pretty solid.、Uh, good stuff from there.、Uh, but you know, the second half is, you know, what I, what I said my problems were before was that it's the pro league now, you know, so having. Anime high school techniques, you know, like Sunken God Flare, Fist, or whatever, like, you know, those crazy names.、Uh, those kind of techniques just they don't feel right in the pro league. And、uh, by, you know, focusing more on this stuff, it did kind of lose its flair from what I was saying. Pacing could have used work. A lack of character development from all the other sumo wrestlers. Very apparent from what I've、uh, read coming in.、Uh, but still, other than all that, the positives are still positives, right?、Uh, good waifus, right? There's very few, but high quality indeed. And I'm still bummed out that he's not in Jump Force after a whole season pass.、Um, hopefully, you know, it's season two. Maybe they could throw him in there. But, you know, they said no sports mangas. Hinomaru Zumo is a sports manga.、Uh, also, after this time, We got the anime, and、uh, I haven't seen the anime yet. But I was like, oh, cool, finally we get an animated. But I haven't heard a whole lot about the anime, and、um, sadly, I don't think it's translated out here for the West,、uh, for the manga, anyways. So that's still、uh, disappointing. But, anyways, let's get into this, man. Back half of this manga was okay at best. Right,、uh, it went very typical route, you know, for the last arc. The whole we're in this final tournament, you know, this is the last chance to shine. We got to make sure our character makes an impact into the pro series, making sure、uh, the top sumo wrestler does not retire this year. And yeah, I mean, because, you know, stuff is rushed in here, like the romantic plot line with Hinomaru Zumo and, you know,、uh, his now fiance. By the end of this series, was very rushed, very, you know, just not really written enough. You know, because when she shows back up into the series, you know, we come to find out, oh, she had feelings for Hinomaru, but we didn't get hints of that at all in the high school section of the series. There was a, a part where she felt respect for him, right? And respect for Sumo, but we didn't get anything about her feelings to Hinomaru. And we're getting it here, and now Hinomaru, like, oh, I guess I did have feelings for her. 
it's like, really? You know, it's just very rushed. And it's like, oh, well, we have to have a female protagonist to help support him in that arc where he was struggling. Sure, it was good uh, when he was struggling to re- to find himself again in the sumo series, right? He wasn't really enjoying himself. And I got to say, that was pretty good stuff, you know, aside from just, well, let's just throw it in there and then we could work on what we're doing. That's fine, I guess. Uh, but still character development is very lacking everywhere else in the series. Like I said, uh, cause this tournament, you know, cause before, you know, in any sports manga anime, they're always going into whoever they're fighting, you know, be other teams or individual players of teams. You always get some backstory. You always get a sense of what this character is, you know, pretty, pretty rooted, uh, and pretty paced evenly. And here we just didn't get that on the final tournament uh for all these sumo wrestlers you know we got a few flashbacks uh just the generic reasons of why they're here and that's pretty much it other than that you know we just see them fighting in the tournaments and i gotta say man the matches i think it because it's the pro league now but the matches just go by like that so fast you know and again this has to do with they're not doing the flashy stuff that we are used to seeing in any sports uh, mangas animes in the first half for sure like how dragged out these matches were how the crazy techniques all the explanation but once you know we're getting into here it's like cut at least in half in timing right like matches end in one chapters important matches with characters we've already established in the series from the high school section to the pro section you know, and I think part of that might have to be with the fact that this is sumo and we're pretty limited to what we can see the characters do, right? Maybe that's also why the moves are not as flashy, not as like over the top, two page spread, all that crazy stuff that we're used to seeing. Uh, so that might be the downfall in that aspect uh, for the action, but still can get pretty intense uh, in the matches, but not like how it used to be, you know, scrolling through like the, the artwork, I think is still great. I like the art as a lot. It, it could go from very, you know, just low energy, you know, downtime to really high intensity, sharp, you know, imagery. And we got a lot less of that in the latter, in the latter half of this manga, sadly, because I don't, I don't know, maybe because we don't have the flashiness, but like seeing Hinomaru in the high school tournament and like, you know, his motif is like, oh, he's a fire demon. You know, he looks like Anryoki from Neo, right? And seeing him do that stuff in the pro league with his bigger stature and different hairstyle, it's some of it's kind of there. But yeah, the anime flair is definitely gone. And I know I said it just doesn't feel placed uh, rightfully in the pro series, but since they're already leaning into it, let's get more of that, right? There was a point where Hinomaru had to fight an old uh, rival from high school, not even a rival, but somebody he knew from high school, and they both went into, like, their, um, angered states or whatever it was called, where, like, they don't care about their bodies, they're gonna sacrifice it, you know, and at this point, Hinomaru already grew as a character, and so you get to see him go past that, but, you know, again, that was only one chapter for the match, which is disappointing. I mean, some characters had their shines, but I I want to say they were the wrong characters at times because there's this one character who we think is pretty important, right, to Hinomaru, and he expresses that. But where has he been in the series? You know, he's, a, he's an older sumo wrestler. We did see him during the high school tournaments, right, where Hinomaru needed to train, get stronger, at a rapid pace and he you know they actually sparred together and so they have that connection of all the years that Hinomaru has been doing sumo uh, especially at the um what is it even called the stable that they live in and you know yeah we got a good decent flashback and his motives were cool but then the fight ends again in one chapter and I was like what's going on man you know I, I kind of missed the two chapter prolonged fights and we did get a few of those when they were important but I feel like we should have had more of those because, again, it's the, the problem with sports mangas like the like their Achilles heel is all oh, these matches can't go that quick. 
And unfortunately, it kept happening consistently here in Hinomaru Zumo. Uh, even the final, the match, it's Hinomaru versus the number one Sumo. The, I forget what the, the name, like the title that they have. But when they clashed, you know, you think like, oh, this would be a pretty big deal. And it was for sure, but it wasn't as many chapters as I thought it was going to be. And, you know, the series ends very cliche for a sports series. And, you know, the epilogue was fine in itself. And then, you know, just chapter closes and the series is over. It's Hinomaru just, you know, continuing uh, his journey with his comrades throughout high school. Um, and even if we're talking about comrades from high school, the coach from the high school team, the faded rematch that is honestly should have been way more hyped up, right? Because they didn't uh, hype it up until the match of. And, you know, typically when it comes to tournament arcs, you know, we're, sh- we're shown the whole roster. We're shown, okay, who's fighting who if this person wins? We didn't get any of that. We just had like four panels in the beginning of a chapter or like post uh, match just saying like, oh, yeah, so these five wrestlers all fought each other. And these are the guys that won. And now we're in this section of the bracket. And now we're just going to see who we're going to fight. I'm like, I kind of w- miss the anticipation the possibility of like oh man if this guy wins who's Hinomaru gonna fight and then what happens if Hinomaru loses what where, where, where does he go in the brackets you know we didn't get any of that and I mean I'm not entirely sure how the sumo tournaments go because you know they do take losses but I don't know where that puts them in position of the tournaments right because it's like oh these are tournaments that happen over the course of like two or three weeks and you could have more than one match a day. So I feel like they could explain the rules on that way more. Uh, I know it's been a while since I started this tournament, right? Because that was before my break on the series. But still, like, I don't remember ever getting a clear explanation of how sumo tournaments work like that. So I wish that was in more depth. And then uh, I constantly bring it up right after end, after the end of important matches. Then we get to see where these crazy sumo players you know go in all these different directions uh really missed all that you know it's like i said it's weird to see the sports anime stuff in the pro in a pro series because you know they're adults they're supposed to take it more seriously you know that's usually how we see mangas and animes go like post high school stuff characters act different you know i mean perfect example madaka box hey can you believe all that was 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 wasn't real we were just thinking that in our heads in high school type of deal and it's like oh now we're mature and we know what to do but since it's still sports manga anime and they're still trying to lean into it they're not leaning into the perfect spots for it so that way Hinomaru Zumo can excel as a series uh, and that's why I think it's underrated because nobody talks about it because I think again the second half just lost its flair unfortunately but overall I'm still satisfied with the series uh, I like it a lot you know it's definitely different sumo who would have thought that could be a manga if going over 200 chapters and getting an anime that's pretty cool man so i might check out some stuff from the anime just see what's going on uh talk about it on a main episode or something but other than that uh go check it out man um especially the high school stuff that's like the peak of the series so if you want to get into that definitely get into that because again the artwork is just amazing when when it's fierce sharp you know, you could see the contrast in the black and white. That's when it really shines, you know. So that's all I have to say for Hinamaru Zumo. Again, go check it out. And uh, you might have heard it in a previous episode. But yeah, these reviews are dropping on Wednesdays now instead of Fridays due, due to the Tower of God segment we're doing since the anime is out at the time of this recording. So that's the shift there. But it's still going to be coming out at a scheduled pace So I look forward to more content from there. And thanks for listening as always, guys. Remember, you can follow us at Unverse Podcast anywhere you go to stay update when episodes drop. And you can email us at unversepodcast at gmail.com. Did you guys check out Hinomaru Zuma? I would love to hear feedback because, again, never hear anything from this series. The only reason I was like, I need to hop back is because I watched uh, Super Patch Wolf's video, right? And he was talking about Hinomaru Zumo. Uh, because what was it? Oh, the state of jump, you know, at the end of 2019. 
and just seeing like what series ended and got canceled and Hinamaru, he brought it up and I was like, oh, it ended? I need to hop back on. So yeah, that's why. Uh, I would love to see more people talk about it, but you know, now that it's over, it's just going to go more of a decline. So that's unfortunate and it's not translated out here. So, well, you know, just what can you do? So that's all for today, guys. Thanks for listening. And we're going to catch you on the next episode. Ready?